Hello and welcome to the show. On the program tonight, your election results. Alberta municipal races in the Midwest put some new faces in councils. And sexual assault center reps come in to talk about their cause. But first, the leaves are gone and the weather is turning. Have you gotten your flu shot? A public health nurse is here to talk about vaccinations. All that tonight on Around the Region. City and town halls in our region are welcoming newcomers into council. But we gained uh, three new people that uh, I think it won't take them long to understand that something has to change here in the city. Election results tonight on Around the Region. But first, let's talk about flu season. Thank you for joining us. Here in the studio with me is Debbie Huber. She is a public health nurse with the Prairie North Health Region. Say thanks so much for coming in. Good morning. Thanks and we're going to be talking about uh, flu season today. Uh, why don't you start off by telling me about uh, how this flu season differs from last flu season? Uh, well, last year uh, it was typically H1N1, um, a pandemic year, they mm -hmm. thought. And so that was the majority of the, the, the disease or so that we that we saw in the communities was H1N1. So we did do seasonal influenza as well, but the numbers were not uh, were not high. We did mostly H1N1. Is H1N1 something that we're still worried about today? Uh, it is one of the uh, strains in this year's seasonal flu vaccine, yes, and it's okay. thought that it will be um, one of the major viruses uh, circulating this year for, for influenza. So how do you know if you have the flu or if you have H1N1? What's the difference? The symptoms are much the same. Mm -hmm. H1N1 is a, is a type of flu. It's a strain of flu. The difference between pandemic and seasonal influenza is pandemic is worldwide. Seasonal is just what we see circulating in our okay. communities um, every, every year. So uh, typically about from, Mar from uh, sorry, October till March is the flu season in uh, North America. And... Um, uh, so the symptoms are similar. People get uh, aches and pains, high fever, maybe a bit of a cold-like symptoms. Uh, congestion usually comes on quite quickly compared to like okay. cold, and you can get quite ill in a few days. And so, uh, obviously, we're here. We're here. We're talking about uh, a lot of flu clinics going on in the in you know, especially here in Lloydminster and around our region. Uh, who should go to these flu cl clinics uh, this year because it is a post-pandemic. Uh, season or year, we are um, opening up the uh, vaccine to everyone. So it's free of charge to anyone who wants it. We do recommend that those high risk groups still get it though. And those are adults 65 years and older, uh, persons with chronic health conditions like heart and lung disease, asthma, diabetes, um, pregnant women, uh, children six months to four years of age, up to five, and then uh, persons with uh, who are severely obese or living in nursing homes or other care facilities. How young can you get the flu vaccine? Uh, six months. Six months, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. That's a lot of crying, hey? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what are other vaccinations that viewers should maybe be thinking about? For? For this season, I mean, is there, I, I know there's a wound cough uh, vaccination clinic not too long ago. Like, is this something that we should be worried about as well? Uh, we are seeing increased activity of pertussis, which is whooping cough, in uh, Saskatchewan. And so we are offering um, uh, a vaccine. It's in the it's Tdap, so it's tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, okay. to uh, moms who have uh, or moms or or fathers who have new infants, um, because it does protect the, the infant. Then, why get vaccinated? Uh, to prevent disease. And to prevent, prevent those spread, spread of disease, of disease. As, as, yeah. disease as well. Yeah. Um, and now there's been an, a fairly large anti-vaccination movement, and uh, there's been a lot of uh, reps behind this and, and saying that uh, vaccinations cause autism. What do you say to that? Uh, no, there's the studies, those studies that were done in the UK that showed that or that uh, implicated that were not well done scientific studies. And since then, if you if you do go to any credible website, they can talk about the scientific studies that have been done since that actually show no proof that it does. Often things happen temporally. So at one year of age, often that's when most autism is diagnosed and that's the time they get the MMR vaccine. So yeah, there's been no association uh, with vaccines for autism. Excellent. I do want to talk about this a little bit more. We just have to take a quick break. Debbie Huber in studio, public health nurse with PNHR.
Welcome back to the show. If you're just joining me now, in studio with me is Debbie Huber, public health nurse with PNHR. We're just in the middle of talking about the anti-vaccination movement. So what kind of disadvantage or advantage are you putting your kid at by not getting them vaccinated? Uh, well, if, if there is an outbreak of, of any pertussis or other communicable disease in the community, they are at higher risk of getting that. Mm -hmm. You're also putting um, other infants or people in the higher risk categories um, at risk of getting the disease because they may not be able to be immunized. So, A lot of people don't get immunized because uh, they're afraid of needles. Is there anything that you can uh, suggest to people who are just sort of afraid of, of going to the clinic? Well, it's, it's just minor. It's, I've had my <laughs> flu shot, I don't feel it. it it's, um, you know, not any more than a mosquito bite generally, but mm -hmm. um, this year for influenza, there are the private markets um, are offering some you know, nasal spray vaccines, and there, oh, okay. some of those are available, though they're not what we provide through the provincially funded program. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, how else can we prevent getting sick? Uh, especially for flu, uh, frequent hand washing, uh, you know, getting enough uh, rest, eating healthy, exercise, your general you know, good health mm -hmm. things. And then um, if you are ill, try not to uh, spread it to others. So not going out in the public. If you're, at, if you're sick, don't go to work, that kind of thing. Seems like a no-brainer. Yeah. Uh, so there's lots of flu clinic clinics going on. Uh, who should go to these flu clinics? How do they work? Uh, they're, they're open to everyone from six months of age right up until, um, you know, seniors over 65. Um, we have a variety of them throughout all throughout the whole region. So in mm -hmm. Lloydminster, uh, open to the Alberta residents as well as uh, Saskatchewan okay. residents. Um, the Alberta program is very similar to Saskatchewan program this year. And I know in the past we've had some issues around that, um, in Lloyd here especially. Um, there's rural clinics. Um, yep. Those clinics are ad all, all advertised on the Prairie North Health Region site. So that's www.pnrha.ca. You can phone your local health unit for more information or for the clinics and uh, dates and times. They're advertised in the papers. You'll see them up in the physician's offices, yep. um, all sorts of places. And if you can't make the ones in Lloyd, you're free to go to the ones in the rural offices or vice versa. So. And how long will these clinics be running? Right from now until the end of December. End of December? Yeah. Wow. And yeah. what should I bring when I go to the a flu clinic? Your health care card is about all we need. That's all? Mm -hmm. well, that seems pretty easy, pretty cinch. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming in, Debbie. It's been a pleasure. Okay, you're welcome. Again, the website is pnhra.ca for all of your flu clinic times and places.